Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you are all good. I am so excited for this video. I am making a Christmas Santa sphere. And honestly, I have been so intimidated by sphere molds. If you've been with me a while, you'll know that. I've said it plenty of times. This is the largest sphere mold from Let's Resin Now. Everything will be linked below under the Let's Resin links alongside your discount code. It actually came as a pack of like six or seven spheres all the way down to teeny tiny ones. Now this is a Santa that I recently bought from Hobbycraft. If you watch my home channel, you'll know that a Hobbycraft just opened up near me and I had to go in. That will be in next Sunday's video. I bought this miniature Santa, the miniature teeny tiny bottle brush trees, and I also have this mold. This is a mold by Katie Sue from Amazon, and it's a gorgeous North Pole sign. I was hoping to have this kind of standing inside the dome with Santa, but sadly, it's just too big for the mold. We're gonna stick to miniature Santa and miniature bottle brush trees. The first thing I want to do with my sphere, now of course this has a wide opening so it's going to be flat bottomed so it's not fully round but I'm going to call it a sphere for the sake of it. I want a snowy background. I want a nice kind of blizzardy snowy background for my Santa's backdrop if you like. So that means I have to pour a first pour and cure it at an angle and to do that I'm just going to use packing tape. The biggest sphere from Let's Resin fits inside a standard roll of packing tape like a dream. It's almost like they were designed to go together and I was just keeping all my fingers crossed because like I said spheres and me we don't get along so I just really wanted to try this. I'm gonna mix part A and part B together. Don't mix A and A. <laughs> Don't mix A and A. I'm going to mix part A and B together from the Let's Resin 4 Hour Cure Epoxy. And into that, I'm going to add some of the Super Sparkle White. Now, this is a company that have gone bust, but just for you online, sell a very similar product. And I'm going to be sharing that with you in an upcoming video as well. It's almost identical to the Super Sparkle White from the Color Cottage, who are sadly no longer with us. I've mixed up my, I've measured and mixed my Let's Resin 4 Hour Cure Epoxy and into that I have put the Super Sparkle White. My theory being this is going to be a beautiful snowy backdrop for Santa and his trees. Now instead of trying to pour the resin in while my mold is at an angle, I figured I would just pour it in like a normal pour and then kind of twirl my mold around. I'm not twirling it all the way around but I figured even if some of that super sparkle white clung to the mold at the top it would be fine it would still look like a snowy backdrop so I'm just swirling it around here and now it's time to fill it to the point where I can't fill it anymore to give me a really decent backdrop my hands were shaking at this point guys so if you see shaky shaky hands I was so scared I was just gonna pour this everywhere I'm just using a wooden lollipop stick to make sure that the resin channels down and into the mold and not everywhere but you can see here it did drip down onto the packing tape but don't worry about that it peels off immediately because it doesn't stick to packing tape so that is why I absolutely love using this and I really wanted the backdrop to come up as far as the lip of the mold like really to the point where I couldn't possibly add any more 24 hours later now it is a four hour cure resin but this was the next day 24 hours later it is time to get to work on Santa and his trees I needed to find a way to elevate and hover Santa down in the resin without him falling down into the mold I want him kind of floating equally hanging <laughs> I want to hang him in from upside down <laughs> this sounds so wrong yeah we need to hang Santa upside down by his feet um sorry Santa so I am creating a platform for him and I'm using lots of small pieces of my jumbo lollipop sticks to just hot glue Santa's feet down onto each individual piece of wood and then so on. So I'm like gluing a piece of wood to the last piece of wood, then I'm adding more hot glue, gluing even more wood. And I, what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get Santa 
at a particular height. I want him more in the mold. I don't want his feet hanging out of the bottom of the mold. I'm hoping I make sense. You can see what I'm doing on screen. I'm just not very good at explaining it. So we have our first platform done. That is just hot glue. Hot glue sticks to wood like a dream. And this is the theory. So we're just going to dangle him by his feet down in. There are so many ways to dangle items in resin when you're doing this kind of pour. So let me know what tricks you use in the comment section down below. So here you see me. I'm now just building it up. I'm adding more and more and more chunks of lollipop sticks with just a dab of hot glue. The sticks do they do the job. They're sticking together like a dream. And I just carry on. Um, adding more wood whilst dangling him down in the mold. Like, is that far enough? Do I want him to go far enough? And of course, at the end of this, we're going to stick the whole thing to one long lollipop stick, which is going to come outside the mold, making sure that Santa does not go for a deep sea dive in my globe because I do want him to look like he is standing upright and not crushed at the top upside down and on his side, if that makes any sense. With the bottle brush trees, I was really nervous about these. My brain was telling me I'm just going to get an explosion of bubbles on these. But I figured if we if that happens, then I'm still going to film it, bring you along with me and we'll talk about it and talk about ways that we could maybe minimise the risk of that. What you see me doing here, now I have to apologise for the angles on this, the angles, oh my gosh, it was really tricky and fiddly to get the angles where I could see it and you could both see it at the same time. Um, yeah, so I flattened out one edge of my bottle brush trees. I want them flat against my snowy background, which has now cured. So I'm just using my hands to flatten it out. You can see here, like a central, a central parting in your hair. And then in that flat section, I'm just doing a line of hot glue. I'm using my tweezers then to get it inside the dome mold and I'm pushing it down onto my snowy background. I'm then using my tweezers to go over it, kind of like give it a zhuzh, give it a bit of a fluff up um, because I don't want them, you know, I don't want them to look flat in there, obviously, but the bits that we do see, I'm just giving them a bit of a zhuzh with my tweezers. This is what we're looking like so far. I decided to go for five trees all the way across the background of Santa and I was just hoping for the best, quite honestly. Now, these have always intimidated me, guys. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I still feel intimidated. Even doing the voiceover, I still feel shaky inside. I didn't know how I was going to make sure that my clear resin came to a point where the snow begins. And I just kept saying, what if I don't get it right? What if I pour the clear resin and it's just too much and then the snow isn't enough and then all of the bottoms of the trees are exposed and it's not going to look good. So I figured I would try to minimize the damage, you know, look at what the worst case scenario would be and try to kind of overcome that in a sense of if, just if I pour too much clear and not enough white, what do I want? I need to be able to disguise the bottoms of the trees. And that is where the white acrylic paint came in. I decided to paint the bottoms of the trees with the white acrylic paint, paint the background just under the trees so that let's just say, let's just say I don't get enough in there. Then we won't just be seeing the exposed wires from those bottle brush trees. I also decided, hey, while I've got paint on my brush, I might as well add some snow to the trees. And acrylic paint, once dried, works perfectly well in resin. So I wasn't worried about that part of it. So as you can see here, the angles, <laughs> the angles are not great. But I hope you can kind of picture what I'm doing. I'm just brushing the paint in and under those trees to disguise them. And then I'm just kind of dry brushing over the bristles of the bottle brush trees to give them an additional snowy glow. Then I moved back to Santa. At this point, I want Santa's feet to be at the same level as the bottoms of the trees. So I want his boots level with the base of the trees. And I wasn't just really that sure of how I was going to do it because I couldn't see. Once I'd kind of like given Santa his platform of wooden sticks, 
I decided let's paint the wooden sticks in the same way that we painted the snowy background. Again, this was just to ensure that if I pour too much clear and I haven't quite like covered his boots, then we're not just gonna see wooden lollipop sticks. You're not gonna be like, yeah, Claire, he's literally standing on some wooden lollipop sticks. So I figured if I paint them with white acrylic paint, we would be able to disguise them in some way, in some fashion. So it would just mix in with the white resin and it would just look like he's standing on snow. Then I thought, <laughs> yeah, but what if, like, what if um, you'll still be able to see the jaggedy, riggedy kind of outlines? So I figured once that was dry, I covered the entire base of sticks in hot glue. Now, hot glue, again, works okay in resin. I wasn't really concerned that the hot glue would come loose or anything like that. But I wanted to give Santa a snowy mound let's just let's just say that a snowy mound now hot glue works real well on your silicon mat so again it was super easy to do then i just peeled it off the silicon mat and i painted that snowy mound in the white acrylic paint and here is what it is looking like to be honest i did have to cut down that hot glue mountain that he's standing on it became too big to fit through the hole of the silicon mold so i do end up having to trim it just slightly and let's not forget we still have to add that long lollipop stick which is going to be the barrier stopping santa from fully <laughs> fully going for a swim in the resin um, and this is what we are looking like let me know what you would have done differently if you would have done this any differently let me know this is what I mean by the barrier so now we have this absolutely perfect barrier to stop Santa from diving all the way down and I think it's working really really well but it was so difficult to gauge the height of Santa and the base of the trees um, I've written it on screen here just so you can kind of understand as well but I couldn't really see in the mold at the angles I needed to see in the mold. Um, I am using the Craft Resin Deep Pour resin for this one. You really do want a, a slow curing, 48 hour curing, slow cure, deep pour resin when you do spheres. You want it to be as water-like as possible and a 48 cure resin just means it's got loads of time to release those bubbles and bring them to the surface so bubbles shouldn't be a problem for you. However, <laughs> I still didn't know if I'd got everything at the right height. So where I'd put the trees, um, I was confident because I'd painted the bottom of the trees. At this point, I thought, it's cool. At least the tree bottoms won't be exposed. But every time I kind of dipped Santa down in, I thought, are his boots at the same level as the base of the trees? I genuinely, guys, I couldn't tell. So let me know in the comment section what you do to overcome this. Like, I just need one of those little kind of cameras. Um, this is what it was looking like. I did end up having to pour some resin out because I poured a bit too much and Santa was really like, it was way over his boots at that point. So I did pour a little bit of resin out, which gave me some resin left over. And I figured, hey, while we're here, we've got leftover resin, most unlike me, we're going to add a tiny little bottle brush tree into one of the smaller sphere molds from Let's Resin. Again, this is all part of the same pack. It comes with so many. It's almost like the Russian dolls. When you get this pack of spheres, it's like a tiny one inside a tiny one and an even tinier one inside a tiny one. So loads to play with here. I did the same thing again, but I kept it real basic I just put a tree in there and that was it this is two days later again this is a 48 hour cure resin I've got a lovely gap here that I'm going to fill with my white resin for my snow but the first thing I need to do is get these lollipop sticks off there are so many on there and of course it's coming out the top of the mold we don't want that we want them either gone or we want them lower than the top of the mold so that you know it can sit flat once we've poured all our resin. Here you see me just using my wire cutters from my jewellery kit just to get the most awkward bits off but I did decide to keep on going. What you don't want to do is break the seal between the resin that's already in there and the mold 
So I was, I was pinching this mould, I was grabbing this mould with all of my might to try and stop any of that resin moving and I didn't want to move the silicon mould. At this point I thought I'm happy with this, this is pretty flat to the surface of the mould and I was happy that if I pour white in here now it's going to fully disguise all of those lollipop sticks. However, I thought one more go Claire, one more go. <laughs> At getting these wooden sticks out and my heart skipped a beat I'm not even kidding I was not expecting I was not expecting that my entire mountain fell off of Santa but I was okay with it because I could see his boots I could see his boots and I knew that I'd got the levels right I was so happy I can't even tell you how happy I think you can probably hear it in my voice over to my shadow foam wall. The shadow foam link is down below. This is saving my life on a daily basis with all of the supplies I need for my resin. My white Vista liquid pigment is the perfect white for this. And I am using, again, the Let's Resin 4 Hour Cure just to finish these off. This is going to be our snowy base. And again, I was still kind of hoping that I had got the levels right. At this point, <laughs> I even said it to my patrons, I think I've buried Santa, I think the snow is going to go up to his waist and we won't even see Santa's feet because again, really hard to see it, really hard to see inside the silicon mould. I cannot tell you how much fun I had with these from being so totally intimidated to try spheres just for bubbles. <laughs> I always feel like no matter what resin I use, even with my resiners, bubbleless machine, getting rid of some bubbles, I always fear. There's always that fear in the back of my head that they won't be good enough, that there'll be bubbles and all of that jazz. This is the next day and it's time to demold. Guys, are you even ready for this? I did use my 99% isopropyl alcohol. This was a trick I learned from Wendy over at Toompish Crafts. I sprayed some of that alcohol down into the mold. What usually happens is it creates like a super slippery slip and slide and you can just pinch the mold and your item just pops out like this. And it's so easy. You don't have to stretch your silicon. So first up, this was the leftover resin and I was actually nearly crying. I was like, this is gorgeous. This is super cute, real basic, real basic sphere, but nonetheless, so cute. I'm holding my hand over because the reflection of my windows on the sphere make it look like there are white clouds floating above the tree. <laughs> so just to, just to clear that up, even my brain was like, what is that in there? It's actually the reflection of my windows. So happy. The resin is crystal clear, guys. This is Craft Resin Deep Pour, crystal clear. There are, however, surface bubbles on the actual mould. So I will show you those soon. And then it was time to demold my big boy, my big boy Santa. This is the background. This is the snowy background. And oh my goodness, look at his boots. He is literally standing in a snowdrift. The bottoms of the trees, luckily I covered them with the white paint because we would have seen the wires if I didn't. I pretty much got it as spot on as I possibly could have. I'm telling you, I thought this snow was going to go up to his waist. Like I genuinely thought we were going to lose his legs. <laughs> like Santa's got stuck in a snowdrift. I am over the moon. I am chuffed to pieces. I'm so in love with him. Honestly, you can see at the bottom where the snow meets the clear. There are some surface bubbles that were stuck to the inside of the silicon mold. You can just about see them there. There are some bubbles on Santa's coat. So maybe, you know, doing a pre-coat of resin on Santa would have been a good idea, just covering him in resin first, let that cure, so that we don't get those bubbles. I was so worried about the bottle brush trees but I didn't have to be. I thought they would just create this absolute explosion of champagne fizz bubbles, but they didn't. I, I honestly love it. The one thing to mention is that it does look like 
from some angles, it does look like I've crushed Santa in there. It looks like it looks like he wasn't dangling at all and that his head is actually crushed against the ceiling of the dome. But I promise you it isn't. He has got a good couple of millimetres in there. But I think because of the nature of the shape of the silicon mould, it's magnified everything. And it just makes it look like Santa is literally touching the top. But he isn't. There's plenty of space there. I love them. I absolutely love them. I love my little Santa. I cannot believe we can still see his feet. And it looks like he's standing in a little snowdrift. Couldn't have gone any better apart from those surface bubbles that I often get trapped inside of these kinds of molds. Let me know what you do to combat that. I did cure this on a heat mat. So I was really hoping that the heat mat would eliminate any bubbles that potentially got stuck inside the silicon mold um but yes yeah, sadly where the snow meets the clear we do have a whole kind of surface of those bubbles you could sand it back absolutely yes you could you could sand the whole thing back and clean it off with alcohol and then kind of like give it a drizzle coat a top coat i most likely won't do that guys because i don't think they take away from the finished piece but i I'm so in love. I'm, I think I'm just giddy with excitement that I made a sphere that worked. Like I made something that worked, guys. <laughs> Are you sitting down for that information? I hope you have enjoyed this and I hope as well that if you are feeling intimidated by sphere molds that you give them a go. Um, again, these are flat bottomed so they're not fully, fully, fully sphere. Um, but give it a go because it's totally worth it. Get your hands on some deep pour resin. Um, I think next time I do this, I'm going to heat the resin up a lot. Um, I did actually put part A in a hot bath before using it just to make sure it was super liquidy. Um, but I think heat is key here. Maybe heating up the silicon mold before using it making sure that we've got that heat mat underneath it, using my resin as bubbleless machine to get even more bubbles out and then putting part A in a hot bath. I think that is the way forward to potentially eliminate any of those surface bubbles that are trapped within the silicon itself. The resin itself is crystal clear and I could not be happier. I hope you have loved it and feel inspired and I will see you in the next video. Bye.